Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for TheDailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot. Let's go to NBC News. They're asking why death may not actually be as final as uh, you might think it is in the future. They say, could graveyards really be a thing of the past? Since every day it seems our lives become a little less tangible. We've grown accustomed to photos, music, and movies as things that exist only in digital form. But death, strange as it sounds... The human corpse could be the next physical object to vanish from our lives. Within a couple of decades, visiting deceased friends and relatives by traveling to a grassy gravesite may seem as quaint as popping a videotape into your VHS player, but then our whole experience of death may be drastically different. Now, if you believe Ray Kurzweil, who's an outspoken critic and futurist and the director of engineering at Google, he says computers will soon match the capabilities of the human brain. Of course, uh, I've been saying that for a long time. We've been seeing this. I mean, all of these uh, visionaries, all of these cutting edge engineers and scientists are all racing at breakneck speed to develop the computer that matches the computing power of the human brain. And let me tell you something. They're close. They're very close. And Kurzweil said at that point, our consciousness will become intimately mingled with machine intelligence leading to a kind of, well, immortality, if you will. Now, this is their idea. Listen, it says, we're going to become increasingly non-biological to the point where the biological part isn't really that important anymore. Kurzweil declared this in 2013 at a conference predicting the world of 2045. He said, even if the biological part went away, it really wouldn't make any difference. I mean, would it make a difference to you if we became a machine? If we uploaded our consciousness, our, our, our memories, if you will, to a machine? Do we really understand what it is that we're trying to upload? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. And I would hope that science would be making these um or let's just say engaging in ethical arguments over this because there really needs to be more study into what makes up the human consciousness than just plugging into the brain and downloading what's there. Because I really truly don't think these people understand what they're screwing with. Much like many other things when they start diving into these new arenas, you know, of course it comes with a lot of risk. But do these people often know when they created the H-bomb or the, just the first atomic bomb, the heck with the H-bomb, did they know for an absolute certainty that it wouldn't ignite the atmosphere on fire? No. As a matter of fact, for them, it was a 50-50 shot, and that was, that, that was good odds for them. That's 50-50, we kill humanity, destroy all life on planet Earth. That's good odds for us. Let's do it. You know, that's what scares me about these uh, kind of people that just go recklessly into this is, of course, you were never asked about it. You were never asked, hey, maybe uh, this isn't such a good idea after all, you know, testing this bomb that has the potential of blowing up the earth. You know, we don't get asked every day whether or not we want to be sprayed on by their geoengineering or whatever else is in the chemtrails. We don't, we don't get asked about that. You don't have a choice when it comes to getting radiated, oftentimes by smart meters, but Wi-Fi, cell phone, uh, all just saturated in RF all day long. Do you have a say in it? What if you don't consent? What then? What do you do? You know, these are things that we have to ask ourselves. It says crowded urban cemeteries, along with a new eco-friendly cremation method known as alkaline hydrolysis promised to be a real trend as a matter of fact they say by 2030 less than one quarter of the dead will receive traditional casket burials the rest will end up well that's the real question where will they end up we don't know because by that time they're saying things could have drastically changed so much that people may not die by 2030 i mean this is this is where they're taking the immortality fight is do you just, at the end of your life, upload your consciousness to a virtual reality run by AI? 
upload your consciousness there and live your day, live infinitely in a construct, you know? That's why I don't think they understand really the, the complexity of the human consciousness. Because I don't believe it's as simple as just memory imprints in the human brain. It goes so much deeper than that. You know, when a person dies, there's a measurable weight loss that occurs. I think it's like 26 grams. That science has, equi has, has equi equated to the soul. It's very interesting, but, you know, we can't prove it. But it's out there. You know, CERN. CERN has gone and with all of the crazy stuff that CERN's doing and all the experimentation that the control freaks are doing with this machine, it's done one thing and flipped humanity upside down, or flipped science, rather, upside down on its head. And that is proving, CERN has proved through their research that the universe is ordered. It's not random in nature. There is an order to it, meaning that there is a consciousness behind it or an intelligence and even Darwin himself, towards the end of his life, had his own doubt, wrote about it. It's called Darwin's Doubt. Read it. Darwin himself didn't believe his own theory at the end. I mean, these are things that we have to consider as we start going down this road of playing God, because that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing things that we really have no idea what the real effects could be or what we're downloading, what we're not downloading, what are you leaving behind? We're just scratching the surface on it, but it should, it should, um, I don't know, be interesting to everybody out there that by 2030, Kurzweil's saying, hey, you know, people may not be dying so much then. And these elitists, of course, you know, they're chomping at the bit to ensure that they don't die. You've got, uh, the work of all of these anti-aging guys, uh, Peter Thiel, who's big venture capitalist, huge into the anti-aging uh, movement. There are so many people out there that are trying to avoid death. And unfortunately, I don't think, at least in my humble opinion, I don't know how easily avoidable it is. So that remains to be seen. We'll find out. Can science cheat death? We'll find out here soon enough. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.